All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Vince Dub Luis, and today in this video, I just kind of wanted to make like a, a day in the life of a small funded day trader. And usually in the like day in the life, like we start or people start like in the morning, but it's actually right now like 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. Uh, Monday night. And the reason why is because I actually don't trade in the morning. I trade at midnight. So I'm actually from the West Coast, so in California, and the market, the U.S. open, stock market open at 6.30 a.m. And I've been trading this, the U.S. open for like three years, but as of late, as, as of last year, when I started trading London session, which for me is at 12 a.m. and trading London session with actually crude oil futures, I actually started seeing more consistency and have been more profitable from it. I just like how the London session is a lot slower. It feels a lot more tame. And um, yeah, I'm waiting for like a lot of, I'm waiting for something to happen. When I trade the US Open at like 6.30, 7 a.m., like things are just moving too fast. And I also don't have like the best quality of sleep because like, yeah, I, I don't get like the, the best like seven or eight hours. And then yeah, just like the faster volatility and then lack of sleep, I, I don't make the best decisions. So, and also trading at night also works well in my schedule. I actually just got off work. I work at a restaurant. Today I was food running. I wasn't serving today, tonight. And yeah, I, I usually work a mix of both night and mornings, but it just works for my, uh, with my lifestyle right now and with my work schedule to just trade London session. And when I trade London session, I only trade it for one hour. So from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. for me. And if my setup doesn't happen within the first hour, then I don't trade unless it's retracing. So if I see a setup and it starts retracing to my limit order and it's like past one o'clock, maybe if it, uh, I'll still, I'll still stay on and see if it actually pulls back to my limit or not. But we'll see how it goes. Um, right before I start trading, which is 12 o'clock, which is basically one more hour left, uh, I like to do some journaling. And I like to do meditation before trading. I don't do like a huge long minute meditation. It's just five minutes. Just it's it's the most consistent for me. I've done 10 minutes before. I've been super inconsistent with it. I still am now with five minutes, but I like using the meditation and journaling as like a as like as like a wind down from just like my whole day. And like it just helps me just get into trading mode. Like, okay, this is like a a bridge. I'm going to use the meditation and journaling to bridge me now from normal events, normal day in the life, or just normal daily activities to now it's time to trade. So it's going to be kind of funny, like recording myself journaling and meditating, because this is really like my, my first day in the life vlog type of type of video. But yeah, I'm going to quickly show you guys do it, how I do it. And then I'll just go through my trading preparations and yeah, like get ready to trade. So what I'm looking at on the daily time frame is I noticed that we had a bullish run on crude oil futures. I was thinking this swing high right here was going to be taken out for yesterday, but it actually reacted and then didn't have any fall through to the downside. So I'm thinking it's still bullish. And yeah, we are still testing the highs yet. We haven't taken out the swing high. So I'm thinking that's where liquidity will be wanting to be taken. And so... That's why my bias is bullish. And then but if we look in the four hour here, we're just still kind of trend grinding higher, which is a good thing. I'm not really too like keen on it right now because just how choppy it is. The thing is though, yesterday was a hot, or Monday was a holiday. It's President's Day, so of course it's supposed to be choppy. And yeah, it's kind of like an equal like highs here. So I'm thinking, price will go higher and take out this swing high right here 
and maybe fill in this like kind of hidden imbalance. And yeah, if we continue looking into the one hour, it's again, still really, st still really choppy here. So that's why I'm hesitant to look for a trade setup right away. And then on the 15 minute, yeah, I'm, I'm going down, top down analysis. I noticed this, I noticed this 15 minute supply zone. And I just like to mark out the, the zones here. I'm not sure if it's gonna actually come back to fill that in, but I just like to mark them out. And then what I did on the five minute was I actually did some five minute market structure mapping. So I like to go back a couple of days and sessions and just map out the swing highs and lows. It helps me mapping the swing high and low makes me feel more confident in the direction. And right now we are in a bullish where the market structure on the five minute is bullish. So that gives me even more confirmation on my, on my long bias. I'm looking for a long setup. I am, if the market structure mapping was to be bearish, like it had the change of character or flipped from bullish to bearish, then I wouldn't be trading because I had my bias to be long and then the, the market structure is bearish and it's not in my checklist. So then I wouldn't trade. And yeah, just because I'm filming today doesn't mean I'm going to be looking for a trade because I have to film. So honestly, if, if a trade setup doesn't happen, then it won't happen. That's how it is. I'm not going to force it. And yeah, at this point, I'm just going to be wait, waiting for the market to open and I'll keep you guys updated on if I see anything of interest. As of right now, I wouldn't really consider this to be an interesting leg to, to take a trade off. I wouldn't be sitting at a retracement like this just because of this choppiness right here. If it was like this, like at the bottom all the way up and had a bigger imbalance, then I would be more keen on taking that. I definitely wouldn't be keen on taking this right here, even though it would, if like it actually came back to that because of this liquidity, this trend line liquidity resting just below it. So I could easily get like swept and the 15 minute like supply, demand zone here would be filled and then go higher. So not gonna, not gonna look for a trade right away. I'm gonna stay patient and see what happens after the open. Okay guys, so it's actually a minute or two into the, the new session, into the London session, and we actually see that price is reacting off this five minute zone, demand zone that I was talking about earlier, and it's actually doing a nice reaction to the upside. But again, like I said, I'm not gonna be taking this just because of the fact that there's this trend line liquidity down below and that I could easily get trapped. And for me, I wanna see a clean break of structure. So if you see this swing high, I wouldn't consider this a break of structure just because none of the candles closed above it. So again, this it's just, it's not within my trading strategy. I don't like how there's this, this choppiness before the upside and I don't like how there isn't a clean break of structure. So that's why I'm not gonna take, my, take this trade even though it's working out right now because it could work out right now. That's the thing. I could miss this trade and that's that's how it is. That's part of trading. But at the same time, like if I try to take the same trade again, you know, and then I lose, then that's on me, you know? So I do miss a lot of setups and it's kind of funny watching it react and go without me right now as I'm making this vlog. But it's just part of the game, you know? It's just part of the game. I can't... I can't trade every day and I can't take all the trades and it's just hindsight, you know? So at the end of the day, I have followed my rules. That's all that matters. And it, the session just started too. It's not like there's no more trades either, you know? So again, just staying patient. I'm just going to watch until one o'clock and yeah. All right, guys, I'm back. So currently it's 1242 AM and I'm just going to pretty much end the session early. For me, I'm not gonna take any trades today and that's totally fine. So back to the beginning of the session where I marked out the five minute demand zone and it ended up working out. It just completely melted to the downside. It took out the trend line. It took out this trend line liquidity that I was afraid of being part of. 
and then ended up even filling in the 15 minute demand zone that I ended up marking up to before the beginning of the session and when I was like preparing. So it's kind of funny how like I called the market, right? I, I did a crystal ball where I called, like I got it right. But yeah, at, at the end of the day, it's just like I've seen patterns like this happen many times before and it's okay to be hesitant, you know? I, I was fe feeling very unsure of taking along here. I just felt like there's a lot of reasons why it could go lower and it just ended up going lower. And the reason why I'm not taking any sells or shorts because of this impulsive move is just because I don't like counter trend t trading. I don't want to take a sell when the market structure is bullish. I just like when everything, when the stars align, you know, like the higher time frame from the daily four hour, one hour is pointing bullish. I like when the five minute market structure is bullish and I like seeing a five minute setup with a fresh impulsive break, impulsive leg with a breaker structure to the upside. Everything is just basically like aligned, you know, and today it just didn't have that and it's totally fine, you know. Better flat than red. That's what I always tell myself and you don't have to trade every day. I, I'm actually, so I did take a trade last week and I was in profit. So and it ended up winning. So maybe at the end of February, I can go ahead and review my month and show you guys all the trades that I did take because just this one trading day doesn't really define like my whole trading strategy, you know? So yeah, guys, I'm gonna wrap up early and I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, guys, good morning. I just woke up like literally two, three minutes ago. It's currently 9.35 and yeah, I usually wake up around 9.30, 10 o'clock, uh, depending if I have work in the morning. I don't have work in the morning today. I have work tonight. I'll be food running food again. And then uh, I start at like 3.30. So I'm gonna go leave the house at around 3, 3 o'clock. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna weigh myself and then I'm gonna do a, a check-in. I'm gonna just like do a video on my physique because I'm actually planning on doing a cut right now. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna do like a, a mini cut. I'm gonna try to lose 10 pounds for the summer. And yeah, that's one of my other goals for this year on top of getting my first payout is I wanna lose 10 pounds uh, before EDC, I'm going to this festival in May. It's called the Electric Daisy Carnival Music Festival. So I just wanna lose 10 pounds for that. And yeah, let me go ahead and get the weigh in right now. So finished my physique update. So 198, I've I've been currently hovering 198 for the past, uh, since honestly, since like September. So which is not a bad thing. I remember, um, I remember back in July when I competed in my first ever bodybuilding show, the lowest weight I've ever gotten to was 170. I'm currently 190 pounds right now. Um, I weight, my height is 5'10". So 190 and then yeah, at the lowest was my was 170. So, but that was like when I was like super strict, I wasn't really eating a lot of calories. And uh, I just wanna do like a mini cut. So that's why my goal is 10 pounds. So 180, 178 is like, a, I would say is like a good goal to, for me to target without killing myself. I don't really need to kill myself because I'm not competing. Um, I'll make a video later, later on my bodybuilding show and why I did it. It's actually for trading reasons too. So I'll make sure to do a video of that, about that later. And now what I'm gonna do guys is actually before I eat, I'm gonna do some cardio right now. Thankfully at my house that I do have this elliptical right here in the back. So I'm gonna be able to do some cardio right there, 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna have my first meal and then go straight to the gym. Uh, I should be able to finish that within the time I need to go to work. So that's usually what I do. You, before work 
if I have work in the at night. And so what I made for breakfast is this. It's just basically nothing too crazy. It's just eggs and then I put it on top of a bagel. So three eggs and a bagel and then I just put some hot sauce on it. Nothing too crazy right now. That's just enough food for me to like digest it and not feel super bloated when I go to the gym. I'm gonna, so right now it's almost 11 o'clock. It's like 10.45. I'm gonna eat this, get ready and try to hit the gym around 12 o'clock. And so for my, for my plans as for how to, how to cut or how I'm gonna be losing 10 pounds, I'm just gonna, so right now my calories are about 2,500 calories. And then I'm currently doing 30 minutes of cardio for three days. I'm gonna update, I'm gonna change my plan every three weeks. So in the next three weeks, I'm gonna drop my calories down to 200. And then the next three weeks, I'm gonna drop my calories again, another 200. So it's just like a slow and steady, gradual decrease. And then I'm gonna increase my cardio sessions too, as well, every three weeks until the, until EDC, which is in May, at like in the later half of May. So I have like about like 10, 12, 10, 12 weeks left, I believe. And then, yeah, like I, I remember in my, my show, the, the lowest I ever cut was like calories was up to 1500 calories, which is crazy for a guy like me, I'm 190 pounds or 180, 175 at the time for 1500 calories. I was basically dying. So I'm not gonna do, go that low. Probably the lowest I'll ever go is 1900, 2000 calories. So it's not like I'm dying. You know, so I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna digest, and then I'm gonna get ready for the gym. I just got to the gym, and today I'm just gonna be doing a push day. So I'm gonna be doing chest, shoulders, and triceps. Ideally, I like to be in and out of the gym within like an hour, hour fifteen minutes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eat this rice crispy first, get a little pre-workout snack, and then I'm gonna do some warm ups. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just record the the actual videos, workouts. And yeah, that'll be it. I'll see you guys in a bit. I know my limits. You can break me down, but I'll stay till the finish line. And I've been counting minutes for quite some time now. Just to see you again. And I've been counting down. What's up guys? So I just finished my workout. I was in the gym for about like an hour and two minutes. I like timing my workouts just so I can like not get too distracted and not rest too long. So finished within the hour. I did abs to finish off the workout. Um, in my last bodybuilding show that when I was cutting down, my ab muscles were not as defined. So I really want to take an extra effort to go ahead and work on that as well as like my upper chest. That's why I was doing two upper chest exercises today and yeah so i'm gonna go home now i'm gonna get my second meal of the day in and then finish up with uh, reading and then get ready for work so see you guys at home so this is my meal number two for the day don't mind this like sludge looking thing it's just literally rice ground turkey and egg whites and then i mixed up some hot sauce in there as well again and i'm also drinking a premier protein shake and yeah that's Pretty much it. I already made sure to track all my calories and macros. I know what I'm going to be eating for the for the day. For the meal, it's just 150 grams of rice, five ounces of ground turkey, and then eight ounces of egg whites. I feel like for me, this is the easiest way to take in egg whites by itself. I personally don't like eating egg whites 
on its own because it doesn't really taste as good as like eating regular eggs. So just little hacks for, for me to just like get my food in. And yeah, I'm gonna eat this and then read my, tra my new trading book and then get ready for work. So right now it's actually 2.15 and I don't have to leave work until like three. So I have a lot of time left over. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and read 10 pages or a little bit more of this new book I have. It's called The Mental Game of Trading by Steven Goldstein. This book actually came out, it came out actually recently, like I believe in the Jan January this year, January, 2024. The author, he's someone I've been listening to a lot on his podcast. It's called Alpha Mind Podcast. It, it's these two guys, these two like veteran, veteran traders from London or from the UK in Europe somewhere. And they have like all this experience in trading over 50 years, I believe combined and then they just talk about psychology and mindfulness and like more of the psych the mental side of trading and yeah he just one of them released their new book and so i had to pick this up i just started reading it literally last week this book right here i like to read um between trading books i like to read self-improvement and then also just communication as well this one right here i just finished this at the beginning of february called how to talk to anyone and it's kind of it's it's really good it's kind of like reading like how to win friends and influence people so it's i just read that book recently um a couple of months ago and i really like this one too it's very similar and yeah i just like to switch on and off between those trading and self-improvement and then communication and that's gonna be it guys i'm gonna actually end the video here because um, after this, I'm I'm just gonna go to work. I'm gonna go to work and then, yeah, that's that's pretty much the rest of my day. I'm not gonna be trading tonight, and the reason being why is because Wednesday is an FOMC event. It's it's a red news folder event, the FOMC minutes. It's only the minutes, but even still, like one of my my tra my trading plan, uh, I don't trade on CPI. NFP and FOMC meetings, even the minutes too. So less is more. I don't even trade Mondays too, guys. So less is more. And then, yeah, the rest of the night after I work, I'm just going to chill, watch YouTube. And then honestly, guys, I've what I've also been on recently are these things called manhwas. So basically like just reading Korean mangas. I started reading them actually at the beginning of the year um, because there's this one anime called solo leveling that's being adapted right now from the the manhwa and it was so good like i had to actually read the manhwa like the original and i i basically wa read the whole thing in a week and there's like 200 chapters and when i was watching the anime it was like ending at chapter 15 and then i read from 15 all the way to 200 in a week it was so good and then i just kept reading ever since then and it just comes to show guys like yeah I'm, even though like I'm i'm really working on myself and trying to better myself like I'm still you know a person a human being as well like I like to chill I like to just hang out it's not always grind 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 but I'm trying to be more accountable I'm trying to work on my goals and just being able to do these things like working out getting on my diet do my cardio and then reading before going to work it just makes me feel very good about myself and like I'm I'm inching my way towards my goals and and then I can just do whatever afterwards. So I hope you guys like this day in the life video. It's kind of weird because it's not like a full day. It's like a, a night and then sleeping and then a, a day afterwards. But it's, yeah, it's my first ever video. I, I was really nervous kind of recording at the gym because like I was like thinking, oh my God, what are these people going to think about me? But no one, no one really thought about anything, you know? I was still able to film regardless. And I tried, not, I tried my best not to get anyone else in it too, just out of like courtesy. But I hope you guys like this video. I'm gonna be posting more, and it would be, it would it would mean so much to me, guys, if you liked the video, and then even subscribed if you like this content. I'm gonna try pushing out more content in the future, and until then, see you guys. Peace.